Architecture is the art or science of designing and creating buildings. Many people are not concerned about architecture, and yet they see it every day. When was the last time you went out on the street and stopped walking and looked up to admire the design of buildings? Wow, that is a really grand facade. These ionic pillars really bring out a Greek feeling. Wow, this canopy with its 15 degree slant is so stylish. No, you just don't. But now, imagine a world without architecture. The now bustling city has transformed into a desolate green landscape. Everywhere around, there are only trees, hills, plains, and grass, and the sky. There are barely any people around, because life is hard to sustain without any sort of shelter. After a hard day's work, you come back, looking for food and shelter, but you realize that the sun is setting and it's too late. You settle down in the grass, shivering in the cold. Now imagine rain, snow, sleet, the burning sun in the afternoon, lions, tigers. Where would you go? Well, you could live in the cave, but who would want to do that? Nowadays, we are so lucky. We can go back to our homes with no worries. In the mornings, you can go to school or work in a nice building. On the weekends, you can go shopping in nice malls. You can do exercise in indoor swimming pools. And architecture brings us together. It's a place for us and our families to gather together. Okay. Now let's backtrack a bit. Did you know the first architect in the world was Imhotep? Before him, tombs, and, tombs for kings in Egypt did not have any design elements. So after kings uh, died, they were buried in boxes like these. And they're really boring. Imhotep changed all of this. He designed the first step pyramid, in which six mastabas of decreasing size were stacked on top of each other. This set the groundwork for the design of other buildings in the future. Look at this impressive pyramid. It's a pyramid of Giza. It was built 4,500 years ago, and it still stands now. After ancient Egyptian architecture, there was ancient Greek architecture, and introduced us to the famous Greek temples. This is the Parthenon. This is how it looks now, and this is how it would have looked before and it's still largely intact. This proves that architecture is an indication of history. Now, architecture is in many ways art. In this building, it's like it's dancing. It's actually called the dancing house. Over time, architecture became iconic in many countries. For example, the Eiffel Tower. What would be a trip to Paris without the Eiffel Tower? This is Venice, and it's defined by the floating villages and buildings. This is Germany, and this is the new Schweinstein Castle. And it inspired this the Cinderella Castle. Architecture is everywhere around us, and it affects our thoughts. This is the Great Wall of China, and it spans all over China in the middle. Hong Kong. What would you think of when someone says the words Hong Kong? Do you think of the transportation system? Dim sum, the peak? Well, I think of the skyline of Hong Kong. The beautiful skyline at night. Architecture shapes what we think of countries and cities. Design affects us in many ways. It affects our emotions, our view of the world. It affects our values and it affects even our ability to perform. This is a church, and churches are usually grand and upreaching. They're usually built in stone or solid materials, which represents the faith. When I go to a church, I feel like I want to pray because it looks like a church. And inside a church, it's really spacious, which lets you feel free. There's a lot of natural sources of light, which makes you feel hope. 
This is the same with schools. In a school, what you do inside is largely motivated by the design. Before, schools were defined by the traditional lockers, corridors, big and boring classrooms, traditional seating. But nowadays, the school, schools in the world are starting to be defined by big and bright open spaces, integration of technology. And this is our school, actually. And students in schools, if it's a really good environment, they're more inclined to learn and to behave. But if they're in a really bad environment, they're more inclined to act out and do bad things. This is why all schools should be designed to promote innovativity. The heights of ceilings actually affects the way you perform. This is a really high ceiling and it makes you feel more free and liberated. This is a really low ceiling and it makes you feel more constrained. And actually, there's studies to prove that in the high and open space, you're better at solving puzzles because the area makes you feel more liberated. In lower spaces, you're better at solving anagrams that have to do with words like confinement and restriction. This is a supermax security cell. An architecture can actually be used to do bad things. So a prisoner is here, and he's in this cell for 23 hours a day. There's a toilet, there's barely any light. What do you feel? Despair, loneliness. The effects in this cell are so bad that prisoners become insane. Color is also a factor in affecting design. In the red environment, you feel more alert, so you're better at solving tasks to do with short-term memory. You're better at finding spelling mistakes. In the blue environment, you feel more relaxed and you s associate the color with the sky and the ocean, which makes you better at doing more creative things. In fact, there was a study that said that people in blue environments had more creative inputs. For example, they were given the task um, to make children toys out of geometric shapes, and their creative inputs doubled in the blue environment. Nowadays, architecture is getting mixed and match. For example, Japan. Traditional J Japanese architecture is defined by its wooden, wooden, uh, wooden walls, its slanting roofs, and beginning in the 19th century, it's starting to become mixed with more Western styles. And nowadays, castles can be seen side by side with modern buildings. This really represents the evolution of architecture. This is IFC. And when you see IFC, you're like, wow, all that glass. Like, how was this possible 1,000 years ago? This really represents how fast we're advancing. As you walk closer to it, you get a feeling of awe and wonder. Nowadays, we have giant malls, like the Dubai Mall, the Burj Khalifa. This is the beautiful sky of Hong Kong. And architecture really beautifies the earth. Here, it integrates nature with design. And architecture is really indication of history. And what I want to say is that architecture is everywhere around us and it shapes us as human beings. It brings us together. It gives us spaces to play, to learn, to live, to enjoy life, to experiment and to invent. Without architecture, there's no fun in life. And next time when you go out on the streets, you should look up and actually look at the design of buildings and how it affects you. And this is why I like architecture, because it beautifies the entire earth. It scatters horizons with beautiful specks of light. It makes us have a pleasing background to look at.
And we should all be grateful to architecture. Thank you.